Have you ever noticed guitar players do that <coughs> at the, when they finish a song? What's up with that? I can see if I had a full band, but I find myself doing that too. Uh, anyway, we have a new micro lesson. This is going to be a really cool one, very easy to follow along with. It's a blues shuffle that's played in the key of A, and you can play this on an acoustic or electric guitar. Um, so the lesson part of this, we're going to break down over the next few minutes here, but if you want to download the tablature and get access to the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com slash micro, M-I-C-R-O, and do a search for ML060. That's the lesson number, micro lesson number for this lesson. Okay, so this is a shuffle that's played in the key of A, and I'm thinking about the A chord here, which is where you bar on the fifth fret, which is your A major bar chord. These three fingers make up the E chord shape, so you can think of that out of the cage system. I'm not playing that that chord, but I'm I'm thinking of that. So I'm starting up in this position with this lick here, right here. This is a great blues lick. So you can tie this lick back to this chord shape. That'll be a takeaway for you. But let me show you how to play that. So it's going to be. Uh, sliding, we're going to be on the 4th string, sliding from the 5th fret up to the 7th fret. And then once I get here, I'm going to go ahead and bar uh, all 3 strings there, actually all 4 strings on the 7th fret. And I'm going to play strings 4, and then, or, or I'm sorry, I'm going to slide into the 4th string, and then I'm going to play strings 2 and 3. And if you look at that, what is that? Well. That's a D chord using the A chord shape out of cage. So I'm really, in actual fact, I'm playing a D to an A, the four chord to the one chord. So we're starting into that, and then we're gonna go into the A chord. But we're gonna hammer on to the sixth fret third string. We're gonna hammer on to that, that third. And so I've, I'm barring the first four strings on the fifth fret, and I'm gonna play strings four, three, two, and one but I'm gonna hammer on to that sixth fret third string so you have that sound. So when you put the two pieces together, you have that. And uh, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that open fifth string, that low A, A string. And that allows me then, since it's an open string, to take my hand off and I can reposition it. Now what I do is I come down to this position that's just what I'm used to. I'm used to playing, uh, you know, that lick up here and then the shuffle like that. But in actual fact, all this moving is, is on the fourth string, fourth fret to the fifth fret. Uh, but anyway, you can position your hand however you want. But that's what's going on, and it looks like this slowly. Yeah. And what I'm doing there, I use my pinky for that, but I'm playing strings five and four, open fifth string, and then there's that fourth fret four string and then 5th fret 4th string. So, and you can hear that I'm, I'm putting my hand down to mute the strings. I'm not letting them ring out like that. It's, you know, it gives it much more control when you do that. And that's all done with the right hand. Kind of a, a palm muted thing in addition to that. Okay, so we have that. Second time through, same thing, except I just do an upstroke on the strings one and two behind that same chord shape there. Then we go back, and then I play this lick. So that's barring the first uh, two strings on the fifth fret, upstroke, and then we're going to do a, a bend and release on the seventh fret third string, pull off. And then I come down and do a hammer onto the seventh fret fourth string. All of that happens really with just one motion. And that's just minor pentatonic scale pattern one. So I'm right in the middle of that. So that makes that easy. So two little takeaways is this lick. You can connect that lick back to this chord shape. This, the other one was that first lick. You can connect that back to this chord shape. Now going forward, if you want to use either of those licks, let's say you're playing in G, you've got that lick, and then you've got that lick, and you can connect it back to the chord shape. Okay, so after that I went to walk down to the four chord. So I'm just picturing minor pentatonic scale, and so I'm coming up here to pattern two. I've got my middle finger on the ninth fret third string, my index finger is on the eighth fret second string. We go into that, and then we go back to that D shape there, so that would be 7th uh, fret, strings 2 and 3, 
fifth fret strings two and three. So that's easy to do. And that's, I'm picking that three, two, three, three, two, three. Those are the string numbers. Three, two, three, three, two, three. You could just strum it, you know, if you wanted to do it that way. But just look at all of these things as, as licks now that you can add to your arsenal. So if you're playing something in A, you've got these double stops that work and sound great. So now we're going to go down to this position. So we're index finger on the third fret, second string, middle fingers on the fourth fret, third string. And then we're going to walk that down two frets. And when I play that, I also hit the open fourth string, which is your D note. The D note, or the D chord, is your four chord. And look at these two notes. Those would be two notes in the D7 chord shape. So hopefully that helps you picture what's going on here with this hand. I'm just walking down to this position. I was just thinking of that D7 chord, because that would be our four chord. Okay, so after I hit that, then we're going to hit the open D string and then look at this same thing that we did same little shuffle thing fourth fret to the fifth fret but now we're playing strings four and three instead of five and four so you got the open fourth string with that third string and then after that we're gonna do the six to the nine I do this quite a bit in these lessons but this is a six a D six chord and a D nine chord Super easy to play because all you're doing is barring the first three strings there on the seventh fret and then you're playing the open D string with it, so the open fourth string. That's a D6 chord. You walk that down two frets and you have a D9 chord. Just remember, whenever you're playing a six chord, you can always go down two frets in this direction and play the nine chord of that same chord. So a D6 to a D9. Um, okay, so let's take it from the beginning and play up to that point. So we have... Back to the 4th fret to the 3rd fret thing, the little shuffle. And then we're going to go... Same th way that we started it, to get back to the one chord. And then there's that upstroke again. Now we're going to go to the five chord, and for the five chord I went. So what I was doing there was I was picturing, it's the same lick that we played when I went. Right, you know, when I went into pattern two of that minor pentatonic scale. But now I'm doing that for the E chord. So I'm thinking E minor pentatonic scale just for this one moment. So while the E chord happens, I play. I've got my index finger on the third fret second string, middle fingers on the fourth fret third string. I'm going to slide into that twice. And then you throw in the low E string or that sixth string. So another way to think about that would be thinking about playing your E7 chord. If I played it like this, using that D7 chord shape, slide that up two frets, that's an E7. So I'm just playing those two notes out of it. And then I come down, hit the open sixth string, and play the shuffle behind that. So you have... And then to play that shuffle, I'm just putting my index finger down on the second fret fifth string, and hitting the open sixth string with it. My pinky just went down on the 4th fret 5th string while I held that bar there on the 2nd uh, uh, fret. Now you, you could use your ring finger for that if that's easier. I just find it easier to use my pinky for that. Okay, so from the E, then we go back to the 4 chord, same 6 to the 9 for the D chord. And then I concluded with 4th fret 2nd fret on the 3rd string fourth fret four string and then the open fifth string that gets us back to the one chord and then watch this that's just a minor pentatonic scale pattern one there's your a chord minor pentatonic scale pattern one we're gonna come up to that eighth fret first string and hit it one two three four four times I guess but every time I hit it I'm bending it so that's the key to that is if I just played it straight, it's going to sound way too flat. You want that twang in there. 
So then after that I went So that's fifth fret first string, fifth fret second string, just bar strings one and two on the fifth fret. And then there's a bend and release, seventh fret third string, and then a pull off. And so my index finger goes down on that fifth fret third string. So all together that like Sounds like that. And then I just went and slid into that A6 chord. That's just your A major bar chord, but take your pinky off and put it uh, on the seventh fret second string. Slide into it. So hopefully this gives you some ideas for things you can do when you're playing a blues rhythm to enhance it, some fill licks, and just some different ideas that maybe you hadn't thought of before. All right, we'll see you in the next one.